This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Fury Gold Mines, Mr. Tim Clark, and the Senior Vice President of Exploration, also of Fury Gold Mines, Mr. Brian Atkinson. Gentlemen, how are y'all today? We're doing great. We're doing great. How are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. I'm excited to have you all on. Listen, as we speak, we have gold and silver looking to break out in a pretty substantial manner. Uh, gold's at 2050 an ounce. Silver just reached the $25 level. The dollar index seems to be breaking down. It's below 103. It hasn't been that way in quite some time. And that coincides with Fury Gold hitting and finding, we talked a bit, a bit off air, pretty much everything Fury is looking for right now. Can we talk about the recent results, gentlemen? Sure. I think Brian is the guy to talk to right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, no, it's, we've been building out this, this hinge target, which is immediately adjacent to our high-grade Eau Claire resource for the last two years. And, uh, you know, we've defined this 400-meter by 300-meter uh, zone of mineralization and it's nice and consistent it's predictable it's helping us you know as we move into the resource modeling stage we're gonna we're gonna be building a lot of ounces out that way so you know it's it's good uh you know big zones high grades you know 20 plus grams uh you know and and you know over, over a meter or two and and some other zones in there it's uh you know it's quite exciting moving forward we we made some big steps on uh you know what is essentially a historic resource that's been around for um, you know ten or ten plus years and making some big strides and making it bigger. Y'all have completed roughly nineteen thousand meters. You have, I believe, sixteen more drill holes that you're waiting on assays from. Can you provide me a, a just an overview, a recap of? the success this year because it's it's one thing to drill 19,000 meters and we know there were challenges with the fires this summer but you also came in under budget you don't see that too very often with you know miners or junior explorers anywhere in the space it's typically the other way around right especially when you have logistical challenges like you did this summer yeah it was definitely a, a challenging year out there uh, and uh, you know our, our Quebec team uh, did a did a fantastic job you know getting through it and, uh, and driving through it you know when we were talking just a month ago we thought we'd be drilling into December to get to the meters and and getting uh, you know getting close to the budget to, and to you know now to come in you know we, we planned 15,000 meters we accomplished 19,000 and we came in a million dollars under budget on that plan is uh, you know, fantastic. We've got a really dedicated team out there that, that delivered for us this year. Tim, yeah, can you? To, can, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I definitely I wanted your take, wanted to, I just wanted to jump in and, and, and say how unusual that is for a junior. And, uh, you know, we looked back. We were going to take more um of a raise last February, but we decided to take less and try and keep the dilution low for investors. And we ended up getting a lot more than we thought. So it's all worked out and I got to give the crew a lot of credit. And on top of that, they're finding gold and they're not just finding gold at Eau Claire, which was, which we knew was there. Um, but they've had some, we've had some nice uh, drill holes out at Percival, one of which we released uh, just about two weeks ago, 279 grams at a meter and a half. It, it, it was four times better than what we had this time last year in Percival that sent the stock price up 100%. And I don't want investors to miss that because this, this is the stuff that these geologists go crazy for internally. Um, it, it's what we were hoping to get and we got it and we've been basically getting everything we've wanted and, uh, we're really well positioned and we've got, um, eight, a little over $8 million in the treasury right now, not including what we have with Dolly Vard mm. and that, that, that's 59 and a half million shares at, I don't know what their price is today, but that's over $50 million in equity approximately. And we're, our market cap is still under $70 million. Well, I think that's an important point to make the Dolly Varden holdings because I think Dolly is, you know, 
a prime takeout target. It's trading at 90 cents today. You mentioned, you know, the amount of shares that you hold. And I think, you know, for, for people out there that are looking for a quality management team that clearly has the geology down um, and, and, and they're looking for gold exposure with a pretty, <clears throat> pretty substantial uh, leverage to the silver price as well, you get both with Fury. I think that's a unique proposition in the junior space and again i have to commend the team for coming in under budget because you just don't really see that very often in our space tim anything to add to that now i'll, I'll touch base here in a second brian in case you have anything to add uh on, on, on your end of things no i, I actually i think you got it all pretty quick not not everybody um uh, you know can really hit those sort of bullet points right on the money but look, if, as, as an investor, when you're coming into the space, when you're looking at an undervalued space like this, what you want to do is buy the quality names coming out. That's where everybody's going to reach back to. That's the way we've tried to run this company. And uh, we're not going bankrupt, even though we're, we're priced like we are. Uh, we've got a ton of cash. We've got a lot of properties. We've got more drill holes than we can get to. With, with new discovery, not just going back on the resource. And you're getting a play wh where we've got the leveraged upside. If, if gold goes, the, the, the second derivative is silver. Hmm. And silver has a lot of torque here. And we could really um, have a, a big successful uh, company on the back of that if that goes. And um, so, you know, the hard part is to catch it. And if you wait, these things are so illiquid, it, it, uh, the momentum will, will just take off and you'll be wondering what happened. And my suggestion is, is to seed some position and get in and get involved before it takes off. And then, it, then you'll rationally be able to make better decisions later about whether you want to put more. Well said. Brian, what can we expect between now and the end of the year? Obviously, assays are pending. I know the team's excited for those, but you seem pretty well positioned to end the year on a very, very strong note. Yeah. No, as you mentioned, uh, still we've we've only put out a little bit under 50% of our holes uh, this year. So 16 holes, 11 which at the hinge and another five out at uh, Percy Val. Uh, and two of those are out, uh, you know, trying to make a new discovery out there. So pretty nice uh, way to close out the year and, and into the new year, we'll be looking to, to do an update, a resource update at Eau Claire. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for the time. Looking forward to having you back on. The timing couldn't be better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks very much. Chat soon, y'all. Hey, everybody. Gerardo Del Real here. If you're enjoying the content that you just saw, you can let us know in three simple steps. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and please share across your network and on social media. Take care, everybody.